The area of triangles is actually super easy. Really, there's a formula and you can just blindly follow it. The area of any triangle is one half times the base times the height. And I guess the only part that might be like mildly difficult would be in trying to identify, well, what is the base and what is the height? So here's kind of a generic triangle right here. And let's answer that. So a half is a constant. What is the base? Is this the base? Is this the base? Is this the base, right? And I think most of you common sense would say like, well, I mean, obviously a building stands on its base. So we'd assume that this is a base and that's correct, sort of. Really, you can designate any side as the base. If a triangle is standing upright, fine, this is the base. But then, so what's the height, right? And this triangle, I mean, this is kind of the height. I don't really measure the height of my friend when he's leaning. So this is kind of confusing. What would the height be in this situation? And that's exactly right. The height is actually not given in this situation. This is not the height. This is not the height. The height by definition has to be exactly perpendicular to the base. So in this case, this would be the height, right? And in order to find the area, they're going to give you that. But I just tricked you on purpose to show that the height is not, is not these diagonal sides, but it's perpendicular to the base. So they might give you this. This would be your height, right? So here's a couple other situations where the height might be kind of weird. So this is a right triangle, so we already know that these two are perpendicular from each other. And so I guess I could call this, right? I could say, well, the base is down here. And the height, let's confirm, is the height actually perpendicular base? Yes, so that's your height. And the reason I said earlier that the base, it doesn't matter, you could actually take this triangle and spin it around and call him the base and him the height. All that matters is that the base and the height are perp to one another. It really doesn't matter if he was the base and he was the height. As long as they're perpendicular to each other, you have the base and the height. So here's one more that's even weirder than these. So what about this triangle, right? This one is crazy because, okay, I guess I could call this the base. Now, both of these heights are not perpendicular to the base. So what do I just not have the height, right? So this is definitely sideways or diagonal. This is diagonal. There is nothing that is perpendicular and I can't even draw one down the middle to make it perpendicular. It is possible that the height can actually be on the outside of the triangle and it still has to be given for you to find the area of this triangle. And they will, the examples that you'll have, they will give you the height, but it is legal, I guess is my point, that the height can be outside the triangle. So let's do a couple problems. So let's just start with this one because it's already given. So they'll give us something like this, like, oh, this is six meters, right? And this height might be 10 meters. And what's really common is sometimes they'll give you sort of a miscellaneous number just to distract you. They'll say, find the area of this triangle, and these are the dimensions. And this 22 is 100% a total decoy. It is not the base, and it is not the height. So I'm smarter than that, so I'll come over here and I'll say, all right, well, this is 1 half times the base, which is 6, times the height, which is 10. And obviously, that looks like 60, half that. This would be 30 meters squared. Don't forget that for any area, your units are going to be squared because you really have you have 6 times 10, but you also have meters times meters, so it's meters squared. So that's a good one. Here's one more case. You know, maybe they'll give you, this is 10 centimeters. And again, they'll give you a decoy just to be mean. That's eight centimeters. And maybe this one they'll tell you is seven centimeters. And you won't be fooled by this decoy. You'll see that the base and the height are exactly perpendicular to one another. So it's just simply one half times the base, which is 10 times seven, which is the height. It looks like about 35 centimeters squared if you do the math. So that's it. So there's one cool curveball that teachers love to do. Since this topic is almost too easy, They'll, they'll give you a curveball like this. And what they'll do is they'll typically say something like this. They'll say the area of this triangle, you know, is 60 meters squared. And then it'll say, comma, find the height, right? And we already know the base. So all I have to do is don't think too hard. I'm going to set this formula equal to area because that's what it is. So we're going to plug area in because we have it. We'll plug in base because we have that. Half is a constant and we'll solve for H. So it's easy. It's just the only way they can try to be like slightly tricky. So let's see. So area 60 equals, I'm not going to do the units, one half times the base is 20 times the height, which is now our variable. We don't know the height. And that's some simple math. Let's do 60 equals what's one half times 20, right? That would be 10 times H still divide by 10, divide by 10. And we get that our height is equal to six meters, which makes sense. If I actually plug that in and I said this was six, I would know that half of that times that would be 10 times six. It checks out. So that's it. Area of the triangle, I think is totally simple. Just don't stray from this perfect formula. Half times base times height 
equals area. If you know area, you can solve for one of these. If you know one of these, solve for area. And also, don't forget units are squared. And more importantly, base and height have to be exactly perpendicular to one another. That's it. Good luck. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that video.